Did you feel the, the fight, the, what, what, what was your thoughts, what were the team's thoughts going through that? We knew that against one of these teams being four goals down, you need a lot of luck to, to come back, not only to play well, because they're, I mean, playing against these teams, uh, you, you don't have room for mistakes. Uh, but I think we, we played really well and, and we were a bit lucky too. I mean, all those goals that they weren't going in before this started. To, to go in. The team showed a lot of fighting spirit. You play Lan Diana in the semi-final. Now they were, they, I mean, against Facundo, blah, 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 it's going to be tough. But they were brought to one goal by but Dubai. And yesterday, La Bamba, one goal. They're not, they're not unbeatable, are they? I mean, you guys can give them a good game for sure, eh? Oh, we know we have a great team, a great organization. We, we are well with horses. The team is playing really well. We know probably Indiana is the team to beat this season. I mean, they're every year for the last four years the team to beat probably. So we knew we know we have to play an unbelievable game. I mean, it's not one of those games that you make mistakes and you can win it. I mean, we have to play nearly a perfect game. But we're we're ready for that. We're focused. The horses are well, and the team is playing well. So we know what we have to do. Hilario, well done. Many congratulations. Good luck in the semi-final, and thank you for talking to Guard TV. Much. All right, thank cheers. By Pierre, sent down for the target. Going up there also this night. Up, up goes the goal. Surely, top to find it. Beautiful play. Very, very good teamwork. King Power back in the hunt here. Really tough, really tough match. Really tough match. Really tough match. Really tough match. We're really happy the four of us. We're in the same team. We're in the same team. Brilliant from top to the side of centre, gets it away, the, the ball away from danger. He looks for a hit up the field as well. Brilliant play by top. Here comes Palito. Up field he goes now. He's got away from the taking from the chasing head to Castagnola. Palito Pieres. One two. Go all the way and make it nine eight. One two. Pieres head is chasing. Five six. Pieres. Perrieres, it pops up out You're going to get a drop in, honey. Perrieres, 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 Ready, Sinead? Okay, yeah. Welcome, everybody, to the Duke's Crown at the Guards Polo Club and to the subsidiary semi-final of the Cartier Queen's Cup. This semi-final is for the Cartier Trophy, the final of which will be played on Sunday morning here on this very ground at Guards, 11 o'clock starting time will be brought live to you by Guards TV in conjunction with Polo Cam. The two teams, La Bamba de Areco, will play UAE. La Bamba, in their familiar wine colours, I'll give you a quick rundown of who's playing. For La Bamba, number one handicap, zero goals from France is Jean-Francois Ducot. A two handicap, three goals, Keen Hall. Three handicap, nine goals is David Sterling. And a back handicap, filling in for one Martin Nero, is Pablo McDonough, also on 10 goals. For UAE, at number one handicap, two goals, 13 years of age, Lucas Monteverdi. Two handicap, three goals, Tom Brody. Three handicap, nine goals is Sapo Cassette. And a back handicap, seven goals, Santi Toccolino. Your umpires are Peter Wright, Julian Appleby, and your referee is Timmy Bowne. Six chuckers for a place in the Cartier Cup final. Ball is in play. Lukitas Monteverdi gets a little bit onto that. It's taken on now by Jean-Francois Ducot. Ducot a little near side shot over to the far board. He takes it. Monteverdi's under chase and behind. Over the top there from Jean-Francois. The ball comes back inside and here we go. It's Sterling. Big drive. Downfield he sends it. Back to the fan goes Santi Toccolino. Pablo McDonough's there as well. There's the hit by Pablo McDonough. Keen Hall is there as well. It's going towards the goal. It's just out to the left hand side and goes wide. Good effort from La Bamba. Less than a minute gone, but the score is UAE 1, La Bamba 0. UAE are 21 goals in handicap, La Bamba 22. So it is a one goal handicap advantage for UAE, UAE from the start. 
Sterling out to his right hand side looking to find Brody. Brody taken on by Sterling. Backhand by Sterling to the far boards. No, it comes back inside. Turn around by Sapo Cassette. Didn't get much onto that. And now there's Pablo McDonough. Pablo turning in front of the oncoming Santi Toccolino. The whistle has gone. It'll be the first penalty of the game and it'll be in favour of UAE. Umpires bring the ball to the halfway line. 5B in favour of the black team. I'm joined by Major Jamie Hayward. These two teams, Jamie, they were very, very good in the prelims. And UAE in particular had a hell of a game. One you can watch on the Guards TV against Talon Dracus. I'll bring Jamie in in a moment as they bring the ball forward now with Santi Toccolino. Huge drive by Toccolino. Look at this. It's right down to the goal. It's 100 plus yards downfield. Brody on the near side. Great play, Tom Brody. Can they stop it? I don't think they can. That was a hell of a strike from Brody and an even better strike from Toccolino to set him up. It is La Bamba 1, UAE 1. Back to the middle they come. Jamie, hell of a strike. Good goal. Was indeed. Had the wind behind him. Many players can't resist the temptation to have a go from the halfway point from a 5B. And the wind, as the polo manager says, across the field. But I would say it was in their favour, Anthony. But the ball is back in play. Right, a little bit of a melee right here in front of us. Lukitas Monteverdi helped out by Brody in behind Toccolino. Coming in also Sterling. Toccolino gets the break and can go forward here. Ducos chasing him in behind. But it's Toccolino now. He gets the spurt on. One drive could do it from there. Sandy Toccolino, a little cut shot's all that's required. He puts it high in the sky and straight through the middle. Beautifully played. And those lineups, Jamie, they are all important to get possession. You get possession you could actually you're going the right way so the players on the other side have to turn around and go backwards so you always get a little bit of an advantage going out of the line out you've got about a five yard start probably if the opposition haven't already turned and so two quick goals there to add to what they got at the start a great taken penalty and then from the line out as you said Santi Toccolino made no mistakes there he's riding a mare in this chucka called Estragita they're back to the middle it's been dry all morning. There are clouds gathering and rain is forecast as Luquitas Monteverdi gets the open backhand. Beautiful play by the young player. Turn around by Pablo McDonough. Here comes Sterling on the grey being hunted down by Brody. Sterling can't get a hold of it. Just bounced on Connolly from there. Ground cutting up. A lot of rain has fallen. Over the top there. Near side drive by Keane Hall. It's out to the left from Keane. Almost one of the hardest shots in the book from Hall. Almost pulled it off, but the score remains 3-0. UAE, one goal in handicap, of course. So we have Pablo McDonough substituting for Juan Martín Nero. Juan Martín had a pre-engagement. This game delayed due to rain, which he could not avoid, which is why Pablo's taken his place today. Right, Sapo Cassette. With the ball, just looking to see where his players are. There's another big drive, lofted again. Another 80 plus yards upfield, he sends it. Coming in, Lukitas Monteverdi goes for the big strike. The ball not running as freely as it normally would here in the rain softened ground. In comes Sterling, will look for the open backhand. No, he checks and tries to come around. Does so, Lukitas gets out of his way. As Sterling with the ball. Another big drive by him, sent up there towards Keane Hall. So, also up there, it is. Jean-Francois over the top they go, Toccolino gets control, UAE have the call here. Santi, Sapo's gone forward at pace, there's the draw, oh, a little pass, upfield looking to find Brody, just stops behind, didn't reach. Over the top there from McDonough, but the umpire was there as well. McDonough's arm raised in the air looking for the foul, and I think he's got it. Now move this one up to the halfway point. They might even take it further. No, they're going to move it up to the halfway point. And I see David Sterling. David plays a brace of greys, one called Duet, and another one that he'll bring back on later called Smoothie in the second chucker. But he's got two lovely greys. He's just getting off that first grey of his, and he's going to come back on with uh, Bonnie, the spare horse that he's bringing back onto the field. It's going to be Pablo McDonough from the halfway line. 
La Bamba looking for their first goal of the game so far. McDonough, Sterling's gone forward, Sapo Cassette's waiting. There's another big drive. Boy, they can hit the ball, these boys, can't they? Up field, he sends it. Lukitas Monteverdi with the backhand went in there, thought he had a play, but it was Sterling's line all day long, and the penalty will go in favour of Labamba, and I'm sure it'll be from 30 yards at least. Jamie, big chance to get on the board for the first time. When you're coming down at pace, it's always a bit of a risk when you take that backhand. You're never quite sure whether you've got enough room. In that case, he didn't have enough room, took the backhand shot, and it will be an opportunity as for them to get a penalty too. Not only took the backhand not far enough ahead, but slightly on the angle. So this will be a 30-yard penalty, free hit, undefended goal, and the opportunity for Jean-Francois Ducot's team to get themselves off the mark. So McDonough looking for 3-1 here. He's going to come in at the walk. Little tap by Pablo. It goes over the line just. It's good from Pablo. 3-1 to score. Pablo McDonough today substituting for Juan Martin. He's playing all of Juan Martin's string, so he won't be so used to the ponies, having not played them throughout the tournament. But he was on a mare there called Sinagosa, as Greg said. Just managed to tap it over, but he'll be just getting used to these ponies in the opening stages of this game. Right, they're back to the middle. Less than two to play in the opening chucker. A place in the Cartier Cup final. In we go, and it is Sapo Cassette. Just gets the line there to get out of his way. Sapo has the call. In left behind now for Toccolino on the pretty grey. There's the drive upfield. It'll be taken on by Sterling. Little flick around on the other side, trying to get away from Cassette, who's looking for the hook. It's hidden in the air. They try to tap it out of the air. Sterling couldn't get there. He gets it back, it looks like, though, over on the far boards. Sterling, Keen Holtz helping him. Sterling, though, turns. Looks up to see where everybody is. There's a little pass in field. And here comes Keen Hall. Hall will get in front of Cassette. Hall, who's been playing exceptionally well during the course of this tournament. And there's a big drive by Hall. But it's across the face of the goal. It's out to the left-hand side. In comes Jean-Francois de Coe. Backhand by Jean-Francois. Gets a little bit onto it. Helped out again by Pablo McDonough. Coming in Toccolino in a defensive role here. Next shot by Toccolino. Taken on again by Sterling. It is Labamba who have the ball back. He faked the backhand there and checks and turns. Sapo must get out of the way. Sterling has the line and now left for McDonough McDonough with a lot of traffic in front he's got to come in field now and make that goal look a, little, a lot wider than it is from that angle he has at the moment left behind again from Sterling for Sterling he goes past Cassette he goes past oh look at this he's gone past Prodi as well but he's left the ball behind and it is Sapo who will bring it forward there's another big one up to the halfway line this time Sapo looking for Tom Brody Toccolino's come forward on the, on the grey and there's the pass by Brody beautiful anticipation from Toccolino good awareness from Brody the ball left behind though good work Keen Hall in comes McDonough backhand strong from McDonough up the centre the hooter's gone less than 30 to play in the chucker 3-0 three, 3-1 three, the score Cassette can he make it 4 a lot of going, luck going on in front of him. Sapo in field now, makes space. Taken on by Sterling to his left. Over the top, he's looking at the umpire's whistle. It's silent, and it'll be Keen Hall. Looking to bring it down field now. Looking to get another one back here for La Bamba. Over the top from Hall. Brody will look for the backhand. They're calling him behind. What can Brody do? Didn't get much onto that. In comes the Lokitas Monteverdi gets away from Sterling. But it's on the boards, on the halfway line. The hooter is gone. That is the end of the opening chaka. UAE 3, La Bamba de Areco 1, back with the second in a few moments. Thank you. By me on the grey angle, shot by me. Goal, James Bond. Very good team. I'm with James Harper, Scone Polo. James, you've just made a semi-final of the Cartier Queen's Cup. What a performance by the team. Superb.
Hilario Joe, Park Place. Wow, that was the mother of all comebacks, wasn't it? What a game and what a comeback. Superb. Yeah, it was. We have been privileged to go backstage and witness what it takes to put a 10 goal maestro onto the field competitively for the 2019 Cartier Queen's Cup. On the left, we have Omar Jose Albonoz, otherwise known as Johnny, renowned as the Gaucho King. Next to him, Alexis Gonzalez, then Juan Cruz Isla de Peloto, Hilario himself, Agustin Menta, the head groom globally of Hilario setup, and finally Diego Figueroa. These wonderful six horses we have in front of us are part of Hilario's total string. We're now going to focus on three ponies in particular. And I'm going to ask Hilario what it is that is so special about his stallion, Machitos Messi. For the start of the second chakra, UA, UAE with the advantage, three goals to one. One goal and handicap, don't forget. We'll have a roll in just on the halfway line here on the Duke's ground. As you can see, the ground cutting up. We've had a huge amount of rain in the last week or so. And even with the rain, I have to give great credit to the ground staff here at Guards because they've worked their socks off to keep these fields in pristine condition for the top polo players in the world to play on. Very difficult with the amount of rain that has fallen. And don't forget, on Sunday, we have two games for you live. The Cartier Trophy will be played for 11 o'clock on this very ground, the Duke's ground, the guard. And of course, at 3 o'clock on the Queen's ground, it will be the final of the Cartier Queen's Cup for 2019, a match between Scone, Polo and Park Place. And Jamie, two teams that have matured throughout the tournament, Scone and Park Place, on the final on Sunday and you would have got big odds at the beginning of the tournament for those two to be in the final. I think all the pundits were proved wrong, but all credit to Skoda and Park Place, as you Including say. Including ourselves. Yes, both Greg and I would not have backed them, and we've watched all of the games. But as you said, they grew and they matured. They played as a team in the last two games superbly, and that's why they got themselves into place. They were a little bit higgledy-piggledy at the start, Greg, um, finding their feet. Scone, the newcomers, have done incredibly well in their first season to come through. They're stable down at Manor Farm, and in their first season of the Queen's Cup, they're going through to the final. Park Place, their second season Last year's finalists, they were beaten 9-7 by La Indiana in the final, but as we saw this year, they overcame La Indiana in the semi-final by 10 goals to 8, which was a little bit of an upset. Um, La Indiana, three finals in a row, not to be there this year. Park Place looking to overturn last year's defeat. But, as you said, Scone coming from Australia, their tails in the air, plenty of confidence, having had an absolutely cracking quarter-final and semi-final. Right, looks like all are assembled. Two umpires back on the field. They line up in front of umpire Appleby, officiating on the far side. And he'll throw inside out from inside of the field to the boards. The ball is in place. Jean Francois unlucky comes off the horse. And it comes David Sterling. Backhand by Sterling. Little tap down the side looking for Pablo McDonough. McDonough has the ball now. Filling in for one Martin Nero. McDonough doesn't get the big drive he wanted. Toccolino can go back at leisure to bring that around for UAE. Santi. Upfield he sends it, looking for Sapo Cassette. Near side pick up by Sapo, stopped by Sterling on the grey. Sterling has the call. Brody comes in, steals it away here. Oh, Brody has done well to steal it away from Sterling. Tom being hustled and muscled, players all around him. Sapo flicks the ball out to the side. He still has control here. Cassette, great control. Sapo Cassette, he lets the horse run now. And here comes the angle shot to go. Sapo is going towards the toe. Oh, it shaves the post to the left hand side and just goes out to the left and wide. Good effort from Sapo there, Jamie. Under pressure from all of those guys in the wine colours, but he almost got it. And he's riding a mare that comes from New Zealand. 
chestnut with a white face called fish we have one or two coming from down under in new zealand and australia but nice horse for him in this second chucker Mike, Mike Dunner's next shot doesn't quite reach Sterling. He has to check and turn, but he's got control now. Sapo's there to challenge him. Sterling has the line. There's the ball sent up again. Look at this. Mike Dunner's free. Pablo, he can't afford a little $10 free, that's for sure. He's led it up, sent it upfield there for Lucas Monteverdi, or I should say for Jean Francois de Co. Monteverdi goes in with the backhand, doesn't make contact. Here comes Toccolino. Santi just brings it back towards his own goal momentarily gets the tail shot out to the side looking for Brody Brody there with Sterling good play Tom Brody Jean-Francois will look for a backhand gets a little bit onto it unlucky comes off his own man's horse and Sapo has the ball there's the drive sent down towards Lukitas who was calling for it Monteverdi goes forward he sh just shanks it across into the centre here Lukitas will look for the big cut shot didn't get a hold of it near side pick up by Sterling on the grey Pelon just checks there's a the little next shot over there Looking to find his man, Keen Hall doesn't reach. Sapo Cassette turns now and has the control for UAE. Sapo with a lot to drive, sent down field. Lucky just Monteverdi in, co in company there with Pablo McDonough. Pablo has the man to his right, the ball to his left and gets the backhand. In comes Sapo again, will send it back in. No, he turns it around. Cassette with McDonough, near side Cassette. He's into the centre now. Angle shot, stopped by Sterling it looks like. They're in a heap out to the left-hand side of the goal. The ball goes out to the left over the back line and wide UAE putting the pressure on La Bamba here they have a two goal advantage no goals yet in this second chucker two and a half minutes gone a couple of players will go off and change Keen Hall gets onto a fresh mount as indeed does Pablo McDonough Sterling will bring the ball forward he's just waiting for his teammates to get back in, on field and there's the pass out to his right looking for Pablo he's found his man McDonough with Toccolino. Sterling is in behind him. Toccolino, oh, I thought he had a play there, didn't. Sterling, there's another big drive, lofted up to the halfway line. Brody's on the chase. McDonough's there also coming in. Jump Francois. Deco gets the drive taken on by young Monteverdi. Monteverdi has time to look around, keeps the man to his left, the ball to his right, and has time to bring it around. The confidence from the young man is amazing. A ball, the ball across field now. He runs onto his own line here. Monteverdi, another big kid, looking for Toccolino. Toccolino's trying to get away from Sterling. Near side, doesn't get a hold of it. Again, Monteverdi still with control here. Monteverdi near side on the boards, right off his strike from Sterling who has to reach and get a hold of it taken on by Toccolino as well with Brody in behind Sterling still with the call there's the pass infield looking for Jean-Francois Jean-Francois has the call up to Duke's ground he goes now look at this good play by Sapo Cassette is up there taking out the man but he's looking to come in there in defence now but Jean-Francois goes over the top the backhand by Toccolino will find Sapo who comes forward near side pick up again Sapo onto the halfway line over the halfway line stopped by McDonough little touch over the top Monteverdi Brody's there as well. Near side is missed by Brody. Oh, conditions hard out here. There's the backhand this time by Sterling. Looking to find McDonough, who's looking to burst through on the halfway line. Pablo, 3-1 to score. McDonough with over two and a half to play in the chucker. McDonough still there over the top. Monteverdi gets the stop up there. On. Oh, the whistle has blown. Brody looking, having a chat there with the umpire. We leave it to the judge. It's all a little bit higgly-piggly, Jamie. The conditions, they're not quite what they're being used to. We've been spoiled with the weather, but they're doing very well, as you'd expect. In the semi-finals, you say, was the first time we really had bad weather. We saw the afternoon's game a little bit like this, a bit, bit technical. I can only say that Tom Brody there, I would say, was dithering on the line. And as a result, he gets the penalty. Just a quick word about, pol I mean, against him at, at four sitting there on the line I just want to have a quick word about Pallon's ponies throughout this tournament he's had two greys that have been a real feature he changed off that one there called smooth and he has another one called duet they've both been playing for five six minutes of the first and second chuckers throughout the tournament very familiar ponies on the field in comes Sterling who's changed and he puts it through another one up on the board La Bamba move up to two So the Cartier Trophy is what's on offer this semi-final. Two minutes remaining in the second. The handicap separates them now. Three UAE, two La Bamba. In play. Brody. 
Brody. They're looking at him. They're looking to the umpire's whistle. Sterling's not happy. He's having words with the umpire. And Brody can go all the way here. Bro over the top. Brody over the top. Lukitas Monteverdi. Sapoka said gets controlled here. Can he find it? Taken on by Sterling. Who's angry? Sterling. Taken on by Toccolino. Sapo doesn't get the backhand. McDonough with a big drive to the halfway line again. Look at this Brody in there with uh, Keen Hall. Keen trying to get away from Tom. Doesn't get control. Sapo. Beautiful play by Sapo. Look at that. He's put it on the end of Toccolino's mallet. He called for that. And there's a big drive by Sapo by Toccolino. Jean-Francois goes back. It'll be Toccolino, though, from 30 yards less even. Surely Santi Toccolino will take it all the way. It's on the goal line. Has he got it? Yes, he has. It sneaks over the goal line. UAE 4. La Bamba 2. They worked for that one. But they slotted it in the end. Good play. All-around play from UAE. 4-2, Jamie. Playing as a team now. Passing the ball nicely, which is always a good sign to see that they have the confidence in all four players. And nice to see the young man, Lucas Monteverdi, assisting there. As back they come to the centre. As you say, teamwork in evidence in trying conditions. In play. Keen Hall. Sterling. Cassette. Hall. Over the top. Toccolino. Toccolino gets it. Sterling trying to go in there on the, his offside. Sterling steals it on the near side. Then he goes to the offside. Now to the near side again. Great play, David Sterling. Very good control under the conditions here. Sterling just fakes the big drive. Here it comes. There it is. Sent down towards the goal again. Jean-Francois goes in there, but it's taken on by Toccolino, who gets the open backhand, turns it around, looking for Sapo Cassette. Sapo's taken out of the play by Keen Hall, who tries to bring it around again. It's all in a bit of a huddle there the, at the moment. Now it is Tom Brody who gets the break. The Hooters gone. Can Brody go all the way here? The Hooters gone. There's less than 30 seconds remaining. Toccolino will take control. Brody will take out the man who was right. That's Sterling. And Toccolino, upfield he goes. Can he go all the way and make it five? Goals to two. Good work by Brody. Takes out the oh, he didn't do his job there fully, did Brody, because Sterling at the backhand sent in again. What a play by Lukitas Monteverdi to find Sapo Cassette. He's got to hit it pretty sharpish. And there's the drive by Cassette. Has he found it? Yes, he has. With second remaining to the end of the second chucker. Beautiful teamwork again by UAE. They now have a lead of five goals to two over La Bamba. Absolutely classic open backhand there by Lucas Monteverdi. Knew where his player was. He couldn't have done it more perfectly. Great experience being showed by the young man. We have been privileged to go backstage and witness what it takes to put a 10-goal maestro onto the field competitively to We have been privileged to go backstage and witness what it Right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Third chucker, three goal advantage, UAE, 5-2 to score. A really well-worked goal at the end of the second chucker to give UAE a 5-2 lead. Superb backhand, open backhand from Lukitas Monteverdi to find Sapo Cassette, who shot from distance and made no trouble in found no trouble in finding the goal. 
Just waiting for Pablo McDonough. As Jamie said earlier, he's riding one Martins Nero's horses. And he wouldn't be used to these horses, obviously. Juan Martin, not here today. Previous commitment, anyway, the ball is in play. Santi Toccolino, backhand, beautifully executed again, but from the tail. Sapo Cassette with Pablo McDonough. Cassette doesn't get much onto it, just takes a little deflection, and we have an umpire's whistle. Umpire over on the far side there was Julian Appleby. And Sapo is having words. He's not happy with the decision. It looks like it's going to be in favour of La Bamba. Well, although the fellow was in front of him, Sapo had the option of hitting it left, hitting it right, even just pushing it straight forward. Unfortunately, he took a huge swipe straight into Sterling's horse, and that's why the umpire blew and gave a spot hit. Anyway, McDonough lofted out to the left. In comes Toccolino's backhand, beautifully done with distance over to the far side, and he finds Cassette. They're going forward here. Brody's gone up there. So too, Lukitas Monteverdi. Toccolino's going up there now. There's the pass in field across. Field. They've all overridden there, and it'll be Tuckleino has to check and go back and get it. Santi lets it go again. Look for a big one, didn't find it. Lukita's on the near side, trying to get away from Sterling. Who checked? Lukita's over the top. Sterling will get it, flicks it under the horse's neck, and takes it to the side. Sterling. Oh, we have a player on the field, Lukita's Monteverdi, and not too sure what happened there. I think gravity just took over. He may have just overreached. Did you see what happened there, Jamie? I just saw him on the deck, but he's a young man. And he won't come to any harm. The little mare that he's riding is called Aliha, the black mare. But uh, when you're only, what is he, 14, Greg? 13. 13 even. Then you bounce. Not like us two. We don't bounce so well, do we, Greg? <coughs> I think I bounce more than you, Jamie. That's for sure. <laughs> you put a crater in the ground, mate. <laughs> well, on that compliment, just to say that uh, although Lucas wasn't in the play, as a young man, I think both teams would have agreed. Nice to give him a chance to remount Unless there is a player actually de in a dangerous in condition, you wouldn't normally blow. But uh, in the conditions of today, and as I said, the two teams agreeing that for a young man, it's right and proper to wait. Sun just coming out now. Hopefully we'll dry conditions out a bit. But that field, as you said, Greg, is uh, taking quite a bit of a pounding. And I don't know how many millimetres of rain we've had in the last three or four days. Probably 50 or 60 as the ball goes back in play. Good. Team, good spirit being shown here. The ball was thrown in and the UAE players got out of the way and left the ball for Pablo McDonough, who's promptly put it over the side and given the ball back to UAE. With the knock-in from the side, the umpire will come and count. It'll be Santi Toccolino on the halfway line. Who has it? Look at that drive again from Toccolino out to the left-hand side of the goal. Pablo will come in on the near side to bring it around out of the air. Pablo just beautiful control from the 10 goaler. Looking to come bring it to the side. Just pl chasing players in behind. Pablo just up in field now. It's taken away by Sapo. Sterling's there to help out his teammates. Sapo hustling him. He gets it back now. Left for McDonough. Upfield by McDonough. Finds Sterling on a run here. Brody's out to his left. And Sterling sends it upfield. John Francois up there. So is Keane Hall. They've got the better Toccolino. Over the, over the top. John Francois just ball, ball, bounced, up, bounced up there. Popped up in the air, the turn around by Tom Brody, beautifully done. Here comes Toccolino, McDonough's out to us in front of him there, going back to defend for La Bamba, ball left for Sapo. Sapo, again the ball just pop, pops up in the air, he loses control, and Sterling goes over the top. Oh, it's difficult out there, isn't it? Keen Hall, around the corner he goes, Sapo in there with the challenge, the umpires again are on hand, whistle blows. Was that a bit of naughty play from Sapo Cassette there, Jamie? I was just looking. I think he might have slipped just in front of the turning player there, but uh, he obviously wasn't so happy. I think probably was more caught unawares than doing anything uh, particularly dangerous. And because of um, the possibly it was more dangerous than we realised, taking it up to the penalty three position, only 40 yards out. And all the po players going off having a change. Only two minutes gone in the third, which... Um, much more heavy conditions mean that ponies get tired up. And as I was saying to you, Pablo McDonough riding Juan Martin's ponies. This 
mare that he's riding with the white face is called Diablo and uh, one of the ponies that Juan Martin we see a lot of and he'll just settle the pony down onto the leading leg so it'll be Diablo now who comes in with Pablo McDonough for this penalty three from 40 yards out. McDonough for 5-3 puts it high they certainly won't stop it and it's straight through the middle two goals separate them now 5-3 to score UAE with the advantage two and a half minutes gone in the third checker coming up to half time thankfully the rain has stayed away I'm touching wood here as I say it showers are forecast we don't need any more that's for sure and especially before Sunday we want the best conditions ground conditions for the players to play in the final of Cartier Queen's Cup there's the hit upfield the backhand oh that's a rare miss there by McDonough and it's taken on by Sapo and he could be punished here look at that drive from Sapo Cassette that is superb beautiful strike beautiful hit wow Cassette 6-3 what a hit Jamie well, when you're Sapo Cassette, formerly 10 goals, now 9 goals, and you get handed a gift from a mistake from the opposing 10-goaler, you're going to say thanks very much. And as you said, he timed it beautifully, looked up, it went all the way through the flags, almost went to the flying barn cottage itself. A lovely strike from McDonough. Wrong from Cassette. Right, McDonough looking to compensate for that little error he made there. Who he's, he was punished for it. McDonough. Still there, Lukita stops him. The Monteverdi, they have to check, turn. Look at his horse's turn. Sterling goes back to get it, taken on by Brody. Sterling gets there first, turns it around. He might even have a go from here. He's about 80 yards out, Sterling. Brody comes in, steals it away, but oh, he was a little bit anxious there, Brody. And it was Sterling's line, it looked like. The whistle's gone. Tom just a little bit keen to get in there and attack the ball and get it away from Sterling. It was Sterling's line all day long. As you said, I think Tom just wasn't quite properly aware of how close he was as they were going across the field at the time, slightly forward. They're going to advance it up and it's another open goal penalty two for La Bamba de Areco, which Sterling is teeing up. Sterling looks like he might take the strike or is he going to leave it for Pablo? Pablo McDonough's changed onto a very well-known horse of Juan Martin Nero's called Mozzarella. You can recognise this horse by the big white face that it has. Very distinctive out on the field. Nose, face, almost the whole head white. It'll be Mozzarella that Pablo McDonough will come in to take the strike on. No mistake again from Pablo. 6-4 the score. Two goals separate them with three to play in the third. And all of the La Bamba goals have been from penalties. All the UAE goals have been from the field with the exception of the handicap. The one goal and handicap is there, 21 goals. They line up again and off we go. Who has it? Backhand by Sapo Cassette. Sterling gets there now in front of Toccolino, around the corner, Keen Hall, can't find it, Monteverdi, Brody, no one's up there for Brody, is called off by Sapo Cassette, Brody goes forward, in comes Pablo, out of the air, look at this Pablo, out of the air again, what a play by, what a play by McDonough, Sterling turns, Lukita's looking for the foul, the whistle's silent, Sterling has the ball, left behind, kick back by the horse over the top there from McDonough, they check and come around again, who's going to get there first? McDonough. Slows it down. There's the big drive. Up free now. Look at this Pillon Sterling who's free to the left. Kagan on now by Toccolino. Backhand Toccolino. Not much, but enough to find Monteverdi. Little touch to the side. Takes it away. Here comes Toccolino. Toccolino on the ground. But again, it'll be Pablo. Going back to defend. Here comes the backhand. Infield. Tail shot. Taken on by Keen Hall. Unlucky comes off the horse. Monteverdi has the ball. Takes it across field. Sterling. Open backhand. Looking to find Sapo. What a play from the young man again. Oh my word. Sapo looking to go forward there. But McDonough coming through at the rate of knots. Whistle blows in unison from both umpires. It'll be a La Bamba penalty coming towards the end of this second, third chakra rather. They're trailing by two a chance to bring it back to the handicap difference and make it 6-5 
Well, that was quite a right angle cross there. Really didn't realise where he was. And uh, you see Labamba playing a little bit of a psychological game, taking that one right the way forward because it was a pretty dangerous play. And I think they're giving a penalty two even from there. So for dangerous play, it might be a penalty three, but advancing it from the 5B through to the 4, down to the 3 or even the 2. Dangerous play, firmly pounced upon by the umpires. Is it a 2 or a 3, Greg? Looks like it's a 2. I think it's a 2. So really very firmly blowing for that one. 30-yard penalty. McDonough on mozzarella. Along the ground from Pablo, 6-5. The handicap separates them. Just over a minute and a half to play in the third. That's five penalties, La Bamba. Four from the five from the field rather from UAE. And you can't afford to be fouling, that's for sure. As has been proved. Just one goal separates them, and that's on handicap. Off again, Tocolino. Now Sterling came out of the lineup. Tocolino had to turn onto that ball. And Pelon has won another penalty for La Bamba. And this is a big chance to make it six goals apiece for La Bamba and make it indeed six penalties in a row if converted. And a very simple foul to give away there from Tocolino. But the umpires can only blow what they see. He was just almost too slow. I mean, he took all the time. I don't think he had any awareness that Pallon had come out of the line-out. He was taking his time as Pallon would have been completely free on his own. They've moved this one right up to a penalty three. I don't think it's a oh, three, sorry, yeah. penalty three, 40 yards out. And once again, Pablo McDonough on Mozzarella has the chance of making it three penalties in a row in this chucker. It's high from Toccolino, and I should say from McDonough, and the goal is good. It's all tied up. Six goals apiece. Six penalties. Would you believe it? No field goals, La Bamba. May I just say, I got that wrong. It wasn't three penalties. It was four in this chucker, and uh, six, as Greg was saying, but four in this chucker. We're off again. Seconds to go to the first bell of the third chucker. Sterling looking for it, finds it. Sterling looking to get away. Lukita steals it away and he finds Sapo. Cassette. There's a drive by Sapo. Up for, Ster up for Lukita. Back to the fend goes McDonough. Look at this. Can the young boy get in there? Can he get ahead of McDonough? Look, a great play by McDonough. Remember of the Fab Four, of course, La Dolphina. He and Sterling. Cambiasso and of course one Martin Nero. He's on a bit of a run here, McDonough. Can he go all the way? Oh, what a play by Pablo McDonough taking on the half fully into the opposite half of the field. He gets away from Tom Brody. Can he go all the way? This could be a hell of a goal. The approach is superb. Look at this from Pablo McDonough. That is brilliant from the 10 goaler. What a goal, McDonough, for La Bamba to take the lead at the end of the third chucker. They were trailing throughout and superb. Absolutely wow, Polo. Just one quick word, five goals there in that chucker to the stick of McDonough, four penalties, and as Greg, an absolutely sensational goal at the end of that chucker with McDonough letting the horse mozzarella really open out its legs and take him down the field. 7-6, half-time. Shot by me. Go, James Fine. Very good teamwork. I'm with James Harper, Scone Polo. James, you've just made the semi final of the Cartier Queen's Cup. What a performance by the team. Superb. Pretty cool, eh? We can't, we can't believe it, really, especially the way we started the season. We were getting a bit worried, and we started the Queen's Cup with two losses. Um, yeah, it's unbelievable, really. Well, to a man, you all played. You never gave them a chance to settle on the ball. These guys like to rock and roll, run, hit big long balls and run and go and score. And you just never let them settle at all, did you? Yeah, that was always a plan, to put as much pressure as possible. And it doesn't matter where we end up on the field. We can 
I can play two, three, four, it doesn't matter, we just take it in turns again and put the pressures. Dave is not here, Max Kirchhoff came in, played a very good game for the team. But overall, the team has progressed, hasn't it, as, as far as a team is concerned. I mean, you're just getting better and better and better, and you'll have a huge amount of confidence now going into the semis. We've got a lot of confidence, but David will be a mess. He couldn't even watch the game, he was so nervous. He was in America, and uh, yeah, he's a mess. You mean the, the big fella, is that who you're talking about? <laughs> yeah. We knew we needed a bit of height today, so we brought in Maxi. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of confidence. We'll be fired up for the semis, and yeah, imagine we can make the final. Well, I'm sure David will be back, though, and he'll be ready to rock and roll. Well done, James. Congratulations, and good luck in the semi-final. Thank, Thank you very much. Hilario Jo, Park Place. Wow, that was the mother of all comfort, wasn't it?
So welcome back. Just a quick recap on these two teams' performance in the Cartier Queen's Cup before we start the second half with La Bamba leading 7-6. So UAE had a great opening start when they beat Casa La Vista Ibiza 14-7. Following that, tremendous match down at Flemish Farm. They went down by 13 goals to 14 to Talandrakis. They then overcame Monterosa again in another great match at Flemish Farm 14-12. And as a result, they missed out on the knockout stages and went straight to the quarterfinals where they were beaten by Sunday's finalists, Park Place 9-8. La Bamba de Areco opened their game with a loss to Talandrakis 8-14. They then lost again to Monterosso 10-11. They beat Casala Vista 14-7. They then went through into the knockout where they beat Mura Sanctus 15 goals to 11, gained themselves a place in the quarterfinals, and then in the quarterfinals they went down to the losing semi finalists, La Indiana. We're back for the second half, La Bamba 7, UAE 6, ball in play. Far side, backhand by Pablo. Sterling is there, turns Hall, gets it, flicks it away from Cassette. Brody called off by Cassette. Sapo brings it around, looks to get the big drive, he decides to run it, Keen was there challenging, now it's left for Monteverdi, the young boy sends it upfield towards Cassette, taken on by Hall again, Cassette has the better of him here, and Cassette can go all the way and get the equaliser, here comes the next shot from Cassette, what a hit, what a strike, Sapo Cassette, beautifully done, and again it was young Lukitas Monteverdi with the pinpoint perfect pass to Sapo Cassette to make it 7-7. As you said, the young man excelling himself, passing it up to the big man himself. But that was a superb under the next shot on the angle. Put it between the flags. Couldn't have put it more firmly away for them to equalise seven apiece. Another field goal for UAE. In play. Toccolino. Has it. Turns around. There's the pass, takes a little deflection out to the left. Monteverdi will try and keep it going here. Lukitas, Brody was there, but Sterling turns it around only as far as Toccolino. UAE, uh, UAE still come forward here. He's told to hit it by the umpire and he's let it go towards the, the goal. Out of the air by Cassette now. Can he find another next shot? Oh, and Lucky comes off the horse. Here comes Monteverdi. Monteverdi shoots and he was quickly in there. Where did he come from? Lukitas, Monteverdi. Wow. 8-7 UAE beginning in the fourth. Perfect start to the second half here for the team in black. UAE Monteverdi very, very quickly in there onto that play. Sapo's ball looked like it was going through but just came off the horse and Monteverdi in there like a flash as they go to the far side for the throw-in. Who will win the lineup? Is the question. Who will get control? Toccolino. Sapo's gone. Go oh, look at this. McDonough has work to do going back to the fence. Sapo, though, can't get in there. McDonough is strong back in the fence. Has time to turn it around. Sapo's still with him. Again, he flicks it forward. Look at this from McDonough. Near side. McDonough goes to the offside. He's over into the opposite half of the field. Here comes Sterling coming through a pace. In behind him, Toccolino. Toccolino with the backhand turns it around. Into the centre. More into the centre even. Turning onto it there was Jean-Francois Ducot. Good defensive play by Jean-Francois. He's done well here. Looked for the angle shot out to the side and he finds his man, Keen Hall. Oh, couldn't get the next shot. Now the near side shot. Over the top from Sterling. Taken on by Brody. Called up by Sapo. Sapo could set. Has the call. They've gone forward, he's told to hit it, and there's the big hit again, upfield, trying to find Brody, or indeed, look at this, another play out of the air from McDonough. Oh, the hand-to-eye coordination is something special here, but oh, as I said that, over the top goes Sterling, here comes Keen Hall, Sapo stops him, Monteverdi there with Brody, Monteverdi has the momentum, Brody probably should have left it, and they're getting, getting a little bit scrappy out there now, as it'll be Keen Hall who goes to goal, Sterling's in behind, so he has plenty of help if required. Keen Hall surely very good play from La Bamba de Areco. They worked hard for that one but they found it in the end. Nice goal for Keen Hall. First one for him of the game. He's riding a horse called penalty. You can recognise that with the white feet. 
as Greg said, supported by Sterling, but he didn't need to help him because Kean Hall made all the running there. Puts another one up onto the board and it makes eight apiece now. Nip and tuck, plenty of field goals on one side and now they're getting field goals for La Bamba. Off he come again, Sapo gets the backhand. Jean-Francois from the lineup will try and bring it around here. Across field he comes. Deco, the Frenchman with the ball, has done well, has done very, very well. Look at this, he's on a bit of a runner here now. Oh, he went for the big one, the ball just popped up over the top and set the back come by Brody. Turning it out very, very quickly indeed was Lukitas Monteverdi. What a play by Luke Monteverdi, trying to get away from Pilon, but he gets the hook. Toccolino's in there as well, the ball's left behind. Brody will keep the attack going. There's the pass up field again, unlucky. Brody will go to the go forward still. Brody, Sterling, Brody, Sterling near side, flicks it around, finds McDonough again on the near side and McDonough trying to bring it forward here it's really opening up now another backhand unlucky for Monteverdi he came off the horse of Sterling Brody fakes the backhand leaves the ball now for Sapo Sapo's hit takes a little tap out of the side and that was into the back I think of Pelon Sterling I'm not sure if it was his leg or his back or whatever but it was a rocket and he's holding just the top of the base of his back rather and that was a stinger Jamie oh. as you can say Pallon really took that one full throttle not sure if it, it looks like the best he's now getting some ice at the top end of his buttock fortunately plenty of flesh there that will have just been a stinger rather than hitting the bone but certainly he'll need to take a little time off to make sure that everything's okay riding a mare called Agatha in this chuck and fortunately no harm done to her just Pilon who has taken that one really pretty hard in the back they get you're allowed to take a little time. In fact, no ambulance has come on. It's just attention from his own team. As he just gets a little ice, usually will take out the real sting. Eight apiece. Place in the Cartier Trophy at 11 o'clock on Sunday morning for the Cartier Queen's Cup. A quick word about Cartier. Started sponsoring this tournament in 2012 this is their eighth year of sponsorship and we are tremendously grateful to Cartier for their sponsorship of this tremendous trophy ten teams I believe have entered the Gold Cup so this year the Cartier Queens Cup had 12 and they've been battling it out and then when they finish here they'll go on to the remainder of the high goal season in between this and the Gold Cup, we have the Warwickshire down in Sarancester. So there's been plenty of polo before and after the Cartier Queen's Cup. But this, the main tournament here at Windsor Green Park in June. Taking a little bit more time just for Sterling to get himself sorted out. Well, Greg... You and I will be around on Sunday. Well, what do you think about the final? We've got these two teams that have come through. They've grown in stature. Do you think they've peaked or will they grow a bit more? Well, we'll only find... The answer to that question, Jamie, is we'll only find out on Sunday because both of them... Well, they've been like fine wines, haven't they? Maturing with age as this tournament went on. Now, Park Place played in the... Prince of Wales Trophy, which is a very well-renowned tournament of its own, but teams do use it as part of a warm-up for indeed the Queen's Cup and indeed later on as part of the, the Gold Cup series also. And Park Place didn't do very well in that tournament and they weren't exceptionally good at the beginning of the Cartier Queen's Cup proper, but when it came to the quarterfinals and into the semis, they have matured as a team and they've played exceptionally well, playing very, very good polo. The team works superb. Scone, again, they were slow to go forward at the beginning of the Cartier and they also have matured. They played against Talandrakis in the quarter final 
And to everyone's surprise, everyone, including myself and Jamie here, had Talon Dracus down as more than likely the favourite for that game and indeed the team to go forward into the semis. But Scone played an exceptional game. For me, it was a masterclass in shutting a team down and they had a 9-2 advantage at half-time, which was kind of unheard of with the standard of polo that's been played during the course of this tournament. And they eventually won by four goals. I think it was 11 goals to seven. Um, Talon Rakas won the last checker, or the last half, rather. Five goals to two, but it wasn't enough to catch up. Anyway, thankfully, Pilon is OK. The magic spray has done its work. The ball will be thrown into play, and Sapo Kasek gets the hit from the line out, and he looked for a big one, but he didn't get a hold of it. He still has another shot here. Open backhand, infield towards the goal. Sterling back to defend, backhand, Sterling. Open, but it's still there. Where's it gone in? It's gone in. I think it may have come off a horse. I was inside it there, James. Did you see exactly what happened there with the open backhand? A little bit of fortune, I think, there more than anything. Um, in polo, you always need a bit of luck. Besides your ponies and your own stick work, luck can play a little bit of a game when the two teams are just very close together. So up goes one on the board for UAE and they take the lead now, nine goals to eight. In play. Sapo looking to come through, taken on by Sterling. Sterling's drive upfield. Here goes Keane Hall. McDonough pulls in behind him now because, and again, he has confidence. This time it's Keane Hall going forward. McDonough will take out Brody. Hall, surely Hall, Hall, Hall. Very good control. Very ver good stick work from Keane Hall to keep his nerve and keep his cool. And the score is all tied up. Nine goals apiece. A place in the final awaits the winners of the Cartier Trophy here on Sunday morning. And, of course, the winners are indeed the two teams to go through in that final will meet Her Majesty on the Queen's ground. Is that right, Jamie? They'll be presented in the afternoon. Just a quick word there. He changed off the mare. He scored the other goal on, got onto a black one called Cubana. Right, here we go. All to play for. Monteverdi can't get a hold of it. McDonough's backhand is strong. Little tail shot. Toccolino reads it well. Goes back for UAE. Taken on by Keane Hall. Backhand again comes up. Brody's horse. has control here. Brody might get there. Oh, look at this. Now, Monteverdi went forward. Brody was in there looking for it as well. But coming through on the line was Pablo McDonough. The penalty will go in favour of La Bamba. Definitely a little bit of confusion there between the two UAE players. I think they both of them didn't realise the other one was there. If one had pulled out, there wouldn't have been a penalty. But as he, Greg said, it will go up the, down the field. Just unfortunate for them that as the two players came together. I think Lucas Monteverdi wasn't aware of the other player on the line. So Labamba with a chance to take it into double figures they were going forward and they would have been clear so being taken right up to a penalty three 40 yards out a defended goal by the striking player can come across it's going to be pablo mcdonough who will take the strike for in this fourth chucker right mcdonough looking for labamba to take the lead again 10 goals to 9 and very, very nicely taken by Pablo McDonough. That was almost like a wedge onto the green. And it is La Bamba taking the lead. And that's a, the first penalty they've had, having had six penalties on the trot. They then had three field goals and that's now the first one, having had those three field goals before. Right, we're off again. Sapo Cassette sends it downfield towards that Labamba goal. In comes Keen Hall over the top there, McDonough. And um, we have players appealing in behind. McDonough played, they got to hit across field. But the umpires, it looks like, are going to give the penalty. Hard to say exactly who was on the line, who was on the right away, or what the situation is. Will it be in favour of Labamba, or will it be in favour of. I think it's in favour of Labamba. And so. The hooter is gone. They've called a chucker. I didn't hear that, Jamie. Anyway, the hooter is gone. That will end the fourth. We will start the fifth with a penalty. Anyway, the scoreboard reads after four here on the Duke's ground. La Bamba de Eco 10, UAE 9. We will see you back in a few moments. Thank you.
McRae and the shot by me. Goal, James Vine. Very good team up. I'm with James Harper, Scone Polo. James, you've just made a semi final of the Cartier Queen's Cup. What a performance by the team. Superb. Pretty cool, eh? We can't, we can't believe it, really, especially the way we started the season. We were getting a bit worried, and we started the Queen's Cup with two losses. Um, yeah, it's unbelievable, really. Well, to a man, you all played. You never gave them a chance to settle on the ball. These guys like to rock and roll, run, hit big, long balls, and run and go and score. And you just never let them settle. Hilario Ojo, Park Place. Wow, that was the mother of all comebacks, wasn't it? What a game and what a comeback. Superb. Yeah, it was a very tight game. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're back with the start of the chucker and the penalty was given to UAE, but hang on, I think he, they put it wide. Did it go out to the right? The goal judge said yes initially. The umpires are pointing to the back line for a knock-in, and that was a big opportunity for UAE to get a... Make the score 10-10, no goal. You cannot afford to miss those, that's for sure, as Pablo McDonough brings the ball back into play for La Bamba. Sterling's on it to his left, and just look at that hit. Sterling is completely unmarked now. He's over on the far side and can go all the way. Look at this. Sapo Kasek goes down the middle of the Duke's ground to try and chase, but Sterling has the call. Sterling infield now. Will he ever go from distance? He checks up. Sapo gets there to try and defend, but he hasn't got a play just yet. Sterling will retain possession. Here comes the next shot from Sterling. Wide, couldn't find the angle. Sapo did enough just to prevent him from getting that hit in towards the goal. 10-9, the score remains. Well, if you leave Sterling out, you've got to do something and come back. He's riding a horse called Faye. He broke loose. He was caught with their pants down. But then, as you said, Tocolina did just enough to upset. Sapo, rather, did just enough to upset him. Right, here's Sapo. The pass from Tocolino. Sapo sends it upfield. Here we go. It is Monteverdi with the drive. Back to the Fengal. Jean Francois to his left. What can the young boy do? Look at this out of the air. Beautiful play. Here's the next shot. My word. Oh, my. Almost. Wow. I thought he was going to get that in there. And that would have been incredible from the young man. Just couldn't find enough angle on that. The ball goes out to the right. Over the back line and wide. 10-9 to score. One and a half minutes gone in the fifth chucker. It'll be Pablo McDonough from the back line. Now, where's everybody going here? Up front. McDonough, there's the cut shot out towards Sterling, who is free here. Sterling, now they can't afford to let this guy go forward here. Brody goes out to is there to challenge out to his left. Sterling keeps control. Pablo says hit it. Sterling, ball just popped up as he went to strike it, but he still has control. Good work by Brody on the board. Sterling will get the right away now. Brody gets out of the way. Pablo comes in behind and gets control and across they bring it. Now where they're using the ball, the umpire was right on top of it and, and he's not happy, Pablo McDonough. The umpire probably would have said use it and they failed to do so. It'll be a hit to UAE. Exactly, Grady. I could clearly hear him say use it and in the umpire's mind he didn't use it correctly enough, took it left, but he should have hit it. And it's one of the great improvements in the game now when the umpire says use it, you have to use it properly. No tapping, a proper hit or a proper run. Tocolino, taken on by Hall. 
little pass towards Sapo. Ball just slowing down in these rain sodden ground here. Sapo gets control. Sterling is chasing to his left. Sapo now puts on a little bit of pace. She will go for a big neck shot here. There is a shot sent in towards the goal. It's out to the right hand side of the target and it will go over the back line and wide. So they're having a little attempts here on goal. Our UAE, but they haven't found the bullseye yet in this fifth chucker. 10 9 to score. Two and a half minutes gone in the fifth. Sterling gets onto a fresh mount. And McDonough will take his time waiting for his teammate to get onto the chestnut with the white face. McDonough brings it forward. Pablo. Sterling's gone out to the left. Keane's gone left as well. There's Hall. Sterling comes in and says, leave it to me on a bit of a run, but he's gone over the top. So too Monteverdi and Jean-Francois. Sapo's there, flicks it around the corner. Now McDonough was looking for the foul there and the whistle hasn't blown and Sapo can second go all the way here. Sapo over the top, backed up by Monteverdi, taken on by Sterling. Little flick on the near side by Sterling. Beautifully done. In comes Hall. Had to check up that horse and came around at right angles, but he's got away. He's got the ball away. Turn around again by Brody. Brody's backhand. Beautifully done. Fine. Sapo can set, can second keep the attack going, angle shot required here for Sapo, here comes the hit, Sapo can set, he will make no mistake, left unchallenged and his 10 goals, finally they find one in the shocker Jamie, they've been pampering the goal here, and peppering it rather, and 10-10 the score of Cassette. Cassette had the time there as you said, they've been pressurising it, must have missed two or three times, but Sapo really had a good look at the goal, popped it away, riding a mare called Botteja. A liver chestnut, 10 apiece. Well, despite the ground being cut up a bit, Greg, 20 goals isn't bad, but I expect more than 10 of them have been penalties. A lot of goals. Don't forget, Jamie, we're looking at the best polo players in the world here. And they can play in anything. Even a, an Irish potato field, these boys would find the ball somewhere. Sterling with the call. Left for Sapo Cassette. Backhand by Sapo is strong. McDonough reads it as usual. Goes back to number four, filling in for one Martin. McDonough turns it around. Monteverdi gets out of the way. McDonough gets away now. It is Pablo. Sapo's in front. There's a big kid. Takes a little inflection. This time it is Sapo who gets it in the base of his back. And oh, that's another stinger. And we had one in the back for Sterling earlier. And hopefully. Sapo will be okay to continue. Pablo goes in, completely unintentional, of course, and says sorry to Sapo Cassette. And he's not getting off his horse just yet anyway. He'll have a bruise there tomorrow morning, that's for sure. Whistle has blown, the clock has stopped, and I think we'll restart with a roll-in. Completely, as I say, unintentional from McDonough. Sapo took one for the boys there but the score remains 10-10 with just over two and a half to play in the fifth anyone's game here as they come together in the lineup well done to Cassette didn't get off his horse withstood the pain and will continue umpire Peter Wright Pulls the ball into play. It goes straight through the pack. And here comes Sapo with the call. McDonough challenging Sapo. McDonough gets it. McDonough looking for the backhand. Not much onto a Sterling. Had to check. Sterling, co correction, that was Keen Hall. His kick came off the horse. Sapo gets it back for UAE. Looks for a big one. Oh, and we have another whistle there. Jamie Duron looking for that one. Sapo with the drive. Whistle's gone. What did you see? Well, as you said, he went for the big under the next shot. Just making sure that it all's okay there. Pretty big huggle, three or four players. And Sapo just making sure that everything's okay. We were talking earlier, Greg, about uh, Scone and um, Park Place. And we said that they've, they've grown. And of course, the big factor will be the ponies. I was fortunate enough to go to Park Place Stables this morning, and I'm going to Scone later on today. So if any of you would like to see a little feature on the ponies of the finalists, it'll be going out on Saturday night, and you can see some of the stars of both those teams when they come onto the field on Sunday. But as you said, Greg, they've matured. Let's see if their ponies are there too. They've got some fine strings, and it may well be 
with both these teams at the height of their game that the pony power will be what matters. But if you'd like to see the feature, it'll go out on Saturday night. Horses are everything, Jamie. Simple as that. You haven't got the horse, you can't get to the ball. It's very, very simple. 60 yards for Pablo McDonough and La Bamba de Areco to make it 11 goals to 10. He's put it high, has Pablo, straight through for the score, and McDonough puts La Bamba back into the lead here. 11 goals to 10, two minutes dead remaining in this fifth chucker. And I think that's the sixth penalty for La Bamba. Four from the field, six. UAE won't be happy with the foul count. That's for sure, especially if they go down here. Anyway, they've lined up on the far side. Sapoca says trying to get away. Backhand by Pablo McDonough. Monteverdi will try and bring it around, but he's failed to make contact there. And in comes Jean Francois for La Bamba now, trying to increase the tally and make it 12. Monteverdi. Over the top again, wasn't sure what to do without a backhand from Sapo Cassette. They turn very sharpish, but McDonough will get there in front of Tom Brody. Pablo slows it down and will have time to turn. Sterling is in behind him. Pablo brings it across field. He decides to go, bring it up there. There's the drive under the neck, downfield. I should say Lukitas couldn't find it. In comes Sapo. Sapo has time to turn it around now. They've all gone forward here of UAE and they've told him to hit it. And there's the pass towards Lukitas. Boy, look at the confidence they have. Now, look at this. Lukitas got a little bit onto a left for Sapo. Well, he takes it. There's the little pass again towards Lukitas Monteverdi. Coming in now, Sapo will take it on his own line. Down the side he goes. McDonough's to his left, challenging. Sapo checks on the boards, over the top, a tad. In comes now, it is, look at this from Toccolino, fix it away. Toccolino lets the horse run. Toccolino stopped by Sterling, backed up by Brody. Brody can come forward here. Tom Brody's over the top, there's no one in behind him. And it'll be Pablo McDonough who brings it away for La, for La Bamba, but it's left behind by him. And luckily for McDonough, it is Sterling with a big drive up field, trying to find teammate Keane Hall who went forward. He's taken on by Toccolino. Toccolino goes over the top, Sapo's there for UAE, he doesn't get much onto it and it is the big man through from the back, McDonough, but he goes over the top also, oh 11-10 to score seconds to go to the first bell of the fifth Chaka, far boards, big right up by Lukitas Monteverdi on Sterling, they're on the boards over there and the whistle has blown, several players looking for it, several players thought they had the right away, whistle blew before the bell, Jamie what did you see there with your binoculars from the side of the field? Well, it looked as though Lucas and Kian were the two right there on the boards. And as you said, the whistle went first and Kian Hall gets the penalty. Lucas came across in front of him right on the boards, maybe two yards away. My apologies, it was Lucas and Kian together, but it's gone to UAE. I thought it looked like Monteverdi, but you know, you can't always get it right from this distance. Right, 30 seconds remaining, the Hooters gone. Infield the pass by Toccolino for Sapo. Cassette, he might let it go from here. He's more than capable. There's it is. Huge hit by Cassette down to the goal. In comes Lukitas. We'll try and bring it around. Lukitas Monteverdi. He's got rid of Jean Francois de Co. Can he find it? It's out to the left hand side. And it's still in play. Brody tries to bring it around. Second remaining. He's been taken on there by two players. Three even, McDonough fighting for it. So two in there, Brody trying to get a hold of it. There's a whistle that will end the fifth chucker. Well, well, well. Oh, they had a chance there, but good defense from La Bamba. That is the end of the fifth chucker. 11-10 to score. Well, I got it wrong on the other side, and it's just as far this time, and there were five players there, Greg, so don't ask me which way it'll go. End of the fifth. Back in a moment with the sixth. Thank you.
Right, welcome back everyone. Sixth chakra, 11 to La Bamba, 10 to UAE. And we're going to restart. Well, it looks like it's going to be a penalty in favour of La Bamba. Just out to the left of their goal. Off the back line. For a foul at the end of the fifth chakra. And Pablo McDonough to bring it forward. There's the hit outfield for Sterling on the little grey. Sterling checks. Brody will challenge him. Going forward, McDonough saying hit it. Sterling waiting for the ball to settle. He just flicks it around now and brings it down to the side. He's over the halfway line. Brody still with Sterling. Brody, good work by Tom Brody. Very good work by Tom Brody. He's stolen it away there. And Brody will look for the backhand pass. And there it is towards Sapo Cassette. Sterling's giving the ball away. This could be dangerous here. Sapo goes infield now. With open space down the Duke's ground, he goes. But a big drive sent downfield towards by Sapo Cassette. Here comes Lucas Monteverdi. Monteverdi over the top by Monteverdi. Sapo to finish it off, surely. It's gone out to the right and wide. He couldn't get there in time. Well, that all started with Tom Brody stealing the ball away from... David Sterling and very good play from Cassette and indeed Monteverdi, but the goal eluded them. The score remains 11 10. It'll be a knock in for La Bamba with a minute gone in the sixth. La Bamba, there's the pass out towards Sterling again. Will he get rid of it this time? This time it's been taken on. He's been taken on by Tocolino. This time he decides to send it and up towards Keen Hall, but a joke unlucky comes off the horse. The ball left now by Lukitas for Tom Brody. Brody looks to find his man up there. That is Cassette. Takes the man to his right, the ball to his left, but he couldn't find it. Backhand again by Keenhall. Not much, but enough to find teammate Sterling. Coming in, Sapo on the line as Sterling came across on the grey. And good work here. Good pressure from UAE. Totally at right angles there. Sapo has established himself firmly on that line. Sterling didn't really see him at all. Only two or three yards ahead at the time. Sapo was going in reverse. So a spot hit awarded for him. And the bay horse that he's riding is called Nobu. This is a thoroughbred from Britain. Probably came off the racetrack. And uh, it's very nice to see these days so many thoroughbreds from the United Kingdom being played in the high goal. So it's Cassette on Nobu. Right, Sapo, he might even have a go at this from here. More than capable, it's 100 plus yards. Didn't quite get a hold of that one and Sterling changes the line, gets the ball out to the right, gets it away from Toccolino, the little grey pony, like a little uh, rocking horse but it's left behind and to Toccolino steals it away Toccolino now looks to come forward bouncing ball the horse kicks it in forward for him he was fortunate there here comes the next shot didn't find it ball left behind here comes Brody's next shot can he, can he find the angle sent down towards Monteverdi in company with McDonough Sterling must get a tail shot does so he turns it away from the goal Keen holds it but only as far as Cassette Sapo good work by Lukitas Monteverdi takes up the man in behind Cassette Lukitas around the corner Sapo again traffic in front all the UAE players, I should say the La Bamba players. Here comes the next shot. Can he find it? Again, it's unlucky off the horse of Jean-Francois. Sterling, the hook in behind. I think it was a foul hook from Brody. Whistle blows. Unfortunate there for Tom Brody. I think the mallet was just sticking it over the back of Sterling's horse. What did you see, Mr. Hayward? The temptation was just a little bit too great for Tom Brody. Sterling went for the big hit. Tom Brody just couldn't resist it. And as you said, he put his stick out, wrong side of the horse. And unfortunately for him, that would take a penalty up to the centre of the field. Sterling coming back in this chucker. I told you he had his two greys, Duet and Smoothie. He played them at the beginning and then he's back on one again for this sixth chucker. Resistant. He just could not resist that one. It was like... A little temptation too much for him. It's like you after a few beers, Jamie. When you see a pretty girl in the bar, you just can't help yourself. Right, halfway line. McDonough. Look at the hit by McDonough. It's miles in the sky and about 100 plus yards downfield. Jean-Francois de Coe goes to the goal. Jean-Francois, the backhand turns it around. I'm not too sure who hit it, but they've saved it. 
I was unsighted as to who got the backhand, but Sapo Cassette has the ball. UAE come forward. Two and a half played in the third, in the sixth rather. Left now for Sapo with the ball. Jean Francois waiting. Jean Francois challenging Sapo. Sapo decides to run the ball over the halfway line he goes Jean-Francois still challenging to his left Sapo just checks looks to see where his teammates are they've all gone forward they know time's running out here and there is a big drive sent down field along the ground kicks hits off a divot bounces up in the air Sterling goes over the top in comes Pablo McDonough and Pablo could have trouble could make trouble here for La Bamba or I should say for UAE big hit by McDonough sent down to the opposite half of the field. Sapo reads it well, goes back to the fence. Sterling, the challenger, the backhand by Sapo, helped out by Toccolino. Coming in, Lukitas. Can he find it? Lukitas is in front of you. No, he can't find it. Again, Jean Francois gets a little bit onto a call off there by McDonough. There's the pass. Near side, next shot sent down by McDonough. It's going down towards the goal. It's just out to the right. Toccolino with the open backhand turns it away for UAE, but only as far as Keen Hall. I should say, bigger part than Jean Francois to go. And when Sapo can set, Taken on there by Sterling on the grey. The whistle blows. It's looking pretty good here for La Bama. The pressure is telling. Great backhand there by Jean-Francois Decaux. Didn't get a great deal of length on it, but he got just enough angle for Sterling to be able to pick up the right of way. And unfortunately, the opposing player in UAE came right across Sterling's line. Penalty two, a chance now to take a two-goal advantage. Great play by La Bamba. And I must say, Jean-Francois is having a cracking chuckle, Greg. You let him free, Jamie, and you'll pay. He's more than capable. There's a lot of experience, been playing for a very long time. The Frenchman, and has done exceptionally well for his team. 30 yards out, and a big chance here for La Bamba to take a two-goal advantage with three minutes to play in the sixth, looking to make it 12-10, and it is McDonough on one of one Martinez Nero's this time it's a grey what's her name Jamie McDonough gets the hit the goal is good it's 12 goals to La Bamba 10 UAE well you asked the name of that mare that horse is called Celeste it's quite a well-known horse of Pablo McDonough's uh, not of one Martin Nero's rather he plays it throughout the Queen's Cup and it's great for Pablo to get the opportunity to play all these ponies of Juan Martins Celeste coming out here as a spare horse in the sixth now what can UAE do they are trailing by two here with two less than three minutes to play they still have time but they got to get a hurry on Toccolino all the UAE goals have been scored from the field the backhand by Sterling Sapo will get control for UAE who's got to get a hurry on and seven goals for UAE and there is the big drive by Sapo for Toccolino near side Toccolino left behind who's there and a play what a play by Pablo McDonough turns that horse around Celeste over on the far side McDonough now will let her run down the side he goes Sapo's there going back to defend for UAE Toccolino I should say uh, McDonough in behind Sapo's got to bring it infield and this is wasting time he checks turns it around what a look at that horse sit down check turn around the corner he goes superb play and superb from the horse also Sapo Sapo Cassette Lukitas is there as well in front of him Sapo the near side sent down towards the goal Sterling is back to the fence gets a little backhand turning it around Sapo gets to right away here she's about 30 yards out there's traffic in front Sapo going forward Keen Hall couldn't help himself the whistle's gone it'll be a penalty Jamie with a minute and a half remaining in favour of UAE and a chance to make it 12-11 they still have time as you said he just couldn't resist himself just like Brody down the other end he couldn't resist the ball coming towards him but he was just slightly across the oncoming cassette that's why the penalty's blown a penalty two open goal and as you said a time enough for them to then get the equaliser with Sapper cassette coming around to take the strike right cassette for 12 11 easy for Sapo. 12-11 now and back to the centre they come. They have time here. Do you UAE? Extraordinary enough, you know, that was the first penalty that UAE have had of this match, which is pretty unusual when you've got that many goals up on the board. And the bad thing as far as UAE are concerned, Jamie, they've given away seven penalties to one. 
and that's a reason why they're behind. That's the main reason why they are behind here. And ooh, who has the call? The backhand comes off the horse. In comes Sterling, taken on by Tocolino. The backhand by Sterling. Going back to the fan will be Lukitas Monteverdi. In goes Keen Hall, riding hard in there. Lukitas doesn't get a hold of it. The ball goes over the top. They all, both go over the top rather. And Sapo has time to check and turn. Now he knows the clock is running down here. He's got a minute to the bell. Sapo can set, tries to get a big one, doesn't find it. Good work by Keen Hall. Here comes the backhand. Looking to find his man. Here comes Sterling. Has he got run on? The first one on Brody. No, Brody gets there first. He looked for the backhand, but he didn't find Sapo. And Sterling will take control. It's looking pretty good here for Alabama. All he got to do is keep it over there and keep possession some way or some shape. And it'll be La Bamba's game they go over the top again Keen Hall can't find it it'll be Tocolino he's got to drive it upfield towards the halfway line who's on the end of it here comes Brody Brody must go in there Brody steps, gets away from from Pablo McDonough the big drive by Tom Brody it's sent down towards the goal it's out to the right hand side it's still in play or is it it's over the back line to the right hand side good effort from Tom but he couldn't find it and there goes the hooter ladies and gentlemen what a performance from La Bamba and what a performance from UAE in hard conditions here on the Juice Ground at the Guards Polo Club. They shake hands and really it was another one of those games Jamie that there was no team deserved to lose but if you want to look back on it UAE will be fuming with themselves because they gave away seven penalties to La Bamba's one and in this at this level in such a tournament such as the Cartier Queens Cup you just cannot afford to make so many mistakes. As you say, mistakes you just can't afford to, especially if the penalty taking was of the quality of La Bamba. I'm counting now. McDonough took one, two, three, he took six penalties, put them through. That's pretty impressive. And that's probably the main reason was they got the penalties, but then, crucially, they converted them. So they go to the Cartier Trophy on Sunday. The opposition will find out shortly. And then, of course, in the afternoon, the Cartier Queen's Cup Park Place against Scone. Greg, a final word, or are we ready to call it a day? Just, Jamie, I just want to say well done to the ground staff of guards. They've been superb on the field with all the moisture and all the rain we've had. Anyway, guys, we'll see you on Sunday, 11 o'clock live from guards. This production being brought to you by Polo Cam in conjunction with Guards TV. Until Sunday, thank you all for watching and bye-bye.